In this section, we will delve into three fundamental hand stitches that every beginner should master. The straight stitch, back stitch and invisible stitch. These stitches are essential for various sewing projects from simple repairs to intricate garment construction. First, we will talk about straight stitch. The straight stitch is the most basic and commonly used hand stitch. It involves passing the needle and thread through the fabric in a straight line. It's ideal for basic seams and attaching, busting and attaching patches or appliques. Second is a back stitch. The back stitch is a strong and durable hand stitch often used for seams and repairs. It involves seaming backward one stitch length and then forward two stitch lengths. It comes a solid line of stitching that's resistant to unraveling making it suitable for securing seams and closures. Third is a invisible stitch. The invisible stitch also known as the slip stitch or later stitch is used for invisible hems, closures and repairs. It involves seaming through the fold of one fabric edge and then catching a small amount of the opposite fabric to create an almost invisible seam. It's essential for creating seamless finishes on garments, pillows and other fabric items. We will demonstrate each stitch step by step showing the correct hand placement, needle positioning and thread tension. We will provide tips for achieving neat and even stitches as well as troubleshooting common issues. You will have the opportunity to practice each stitch on a fabric, sampler or scrap fabric. We will offer guidance and feedback to help students improve their stitching skills. Mastering these three basic hand stitches will lay a solid foundation for your saving journey. With practice and patience, you will gain confidence in your ability to tackle a wide range of saving projects with precision and fine ease. Welcome to lecture 2. In this section, we will cover the fundamental supplies necessary for hand stitching. These items are essential for executing various hand stitches with precision and ease. What supplies you will need for this lecture? First you need a fabric, choose a suitable fabric for your project such as cotton canvas or any lightweight woven fabric. Ensure the fabric is clean and free from wrinkles for smooth stitching. Second is a scissors, use small scissors with short blades for cutting thread and trimming fabric edges. Keep your scissors clean and sharp for efficient cutting. Third is a pins. Utilize straight pins to temporarily hold fabric layers together during stitching. OPT for pins with a smooth shaft and short point for easy insertion into fabric. Fourth is a marker. Use a fabric marker or chalk to make temporary markings on the fabric indicating stitching lines or pattern guidelines. Choose a marker that contrasts with your fabric color for better visibility. Fifth is a thread. Select high quality sewing thread in a color that complements your fabric. Ensure the thread is strong and suitable for hand stitching to create durable seams. Sixth is a ruler. Have a ruler or measuring tape on hand to measure and mark stitching lines accurately. Use the ruler to maintain uniformity and Precision in your stitches. Seven is a needle. Choose hand sewing needles appropriate for your fabric weight and thread thickness. Ensure the needle's eye is large enough to accommodate your thread for easy threading. As a beginner, you can use a needle threader also. It's easy for beginners. Eight is iron. Keep an iron nearby for pressing fabric before and after stitching to ensure smooth seams and professional looking results. Use the iron to flatten seams and remove wrinkles from your fabric for precise stitching. 
we will demonstrate how to prepare these supplies before starting your hand stitching project. We will discuss the importance of each item and how they contribute to successful hand stitching. With these essential supplies at your disposal, you will be ready to embark on your hand stitching journey with confidence. Practice using these supplies together to familiarize yourself with their functions and improve your stitching skills over time. Welcome to lecture 3. In this lecture, we will focus on the crucial step of preparing your fabric for hand stitching. Properly ironing and straightening your fabric is essential for achieving precise stitches and professional looking results. First, you need to iron your fabric. Heat up your iron to the appropriate temperature setting for your fabric type. Lay your fabric on a flat surface, ensuring it's free from wrinkles and folds. Begin by ironing the wrong side of the fabric first to remove any creases or wrinkles. Then lift up the fabric and press the right side gently to smooth out any remaining wrinkles. Ensure your fabric is thoroughly ironed and smooth before proceeding to the next step. Once ironed, lay your fabric with the wrong side facing up on your work surface. Use a ruler to mark a straight line along the edge of the fabric where it appears faulty or uneven. Carefully cut along the marked line using sharp scissors to straighten the edge. Repeat the same process on the opposite edge of the fabric. To ensure both sides are straight and even. Now it's time to fold the fabric with your fabric now properly ironed and straightened. Fold it in fold it in half lengthwise to find the center point. Use your iron to press the fold gently, creating a crease at the center of the fabric. Once folded and pressed, cut along the folded edge to separate this fabric into two equal pieces. In the upcoming lecture, we will explore how to secure the fabric pieces with pins and create a straight edge for stitching. These foundational steps are crucial for setting the groundwork for successful hand stitching and achieving professional quality results. By following these steps to iron and straighten your fabric, you will ensure a smooth and even surface for your hand stitching project. Take your time to carefully prepare your fabric as this initial step gently influences the overall outcome of your sewing project. If you have any questions about this, feel free to ask. I am here to help. Welcome to lecture 4. In this lecture, we will focus on preparing your fabric for a straight stitch which is a fundamental hand stitching technique. Properly securing your fabric pieces with pins and marking a straight line will ensure precise stitching and professional results. First, you need to lay out your fabric. Start by laying both fabric pieces on a flat surface, ensuring the right sides are facing each other. Align the edges of the fabric pieces evenly to ensure they match up accurately. Next, you need to securing the, securing the fabric with pins. 
using straight pins begin securing the fabric pieces together place the pins horizontally along the fabric making sure to keep them away from the edges the pins should be inserted horizontally to the edge of the fabric securing both layers together with the fabric pieces securely pinned together use a ruler to mark a straight line along the edge of the fabric measure half inch seam allowance from the edge of the fabric and mark this line using a marker or chalk ensure the line is straight and consistent along the length of the fabric in the next lecture we will dive into the technique of straight stitching following the mark line to join the fabric pieces together by properly preparing your fabric and marking the stitching line you will set the foundation for successful hand stitching and professional quality results taking the time to securely pin your fabric pieces and mark the stitching line will ensure accuracy and precision in your straight stitching these preparatory steps are essential for achieving neat and professional looking seams in your sewing projects welcome to lecture 5 in this lecture we will cover the essential skill of threading the needle and tying a skewer knot at the end of your thread properly threading your needle and creating a sturdy knot will ensure smooth and efficient hand stitching first you need to prepare your thread cut a length of thread from your spool ensuring it's manageable and won't tangle easily trim the end of the thread to create a clean edge making it easier to thread through the needle's eye hold the needle in one hand and the end of the thread in the other position the thread near the needle's eye and focus on inserting it through the hole Sometimes it can be challenging to thread the needle but with patience and practice you will improve your accuracy once the thread is through the needle side pull it gently until there is an equal length of thread on both sides once you thread the needle now just going to tying the knot hold the needle in your left hand ensuring the thread hangs down freely take the end of the thread in your right hand and place it across the needle's eye horizontally wrap the thread around the needle 2 to 3 times in a clockwise direction creating loops around the needle hold the loops securely with your thumb and index finger slowly pull the needle through the loops while maintaining tension on the thread as the loops tighten a knot will form at the base of the needle once the knot is secured gently pull the needle away from the loops to tighten the knot further trim any excess thread near the knot leaving a small tail threading the needle and tying a knot may seem like simple task but they are crucial for successful hand stitching practice these techniques regularly to improve your skills and efficiency in sewing projects In next step we will explore the straight stitch one of the basic hand stitching techniques used in sewing projects mastering this stitch will allow you to join fabric pieces securely and neatly if you have any questions you you can feel free to ask i am here to help you welcome to lecture 6 in this lecture you will learn about the versatile running stitch and its applications follow these steps to master the running stitch First understand the versatility of the running stitch which is commonly used for basting gathering and decorative purposes grab your fabric pieces in your left hand and take your needle in right hand i am just going to make stitches just go up and down along that line i am just going to start with showing you a basic running stitch so again we have our thread with a knot at the end 
and we are going to start up close to the top edge but not so close that it's going to rip through the fabric and rip off there so i'm going to pull my needle up to the front so i have caught my knot back here catching it and then i am going to go forward about a quarter of an inch you can decide how long or short you want to make your stitches the longer the stitches are the easier they are to take out and i feel like shorter stitches are a little bit more neat and secure so you can see i went forward about a quarter of an inch put my needle back down in and then i'm going to go ahead and pull that down so then i am going to come up from the back with my needle the same length forward and pull the thread up through and then go forward again and then go forward again the same length and push that through to the back and you don't want to pull too tight otherwise it's going to cause your uh, fabric to pucker so just do nice even stitches and give it a little tug but not too tight when you are stitching so this is a good stitch to use while uh, hand sewing if if the part of whatever you are sewing is not uh, going to get a lot of wear and tear it's the quickest stitch to get two pieces of fabric together and you can do really long stitches and that is actually better for base what's called basting and and basting is when you temporarily sew two pieces of fabric together and when you are gonna like machine, machine stitch them later and the longer stitches just make it easier to take out afterwards because it's not permanent if you want it to go faster uh, to sew the stitch which would be bringing the needle up and then back down and then you can bring it up and then back down like that and that just saves you time while stitching and then uh, you make two stitches there so you can see how that just up and down and you can see how i if i pull that would create gathering you are making a skirt or something that has a ruffle you can pull that stitching stitch basting stitch so when you reach at the end they do one last stitch they do one last stitch and then turn the fabric over and you can see it should look pretty similar to how it looks on the front and i'm going to take my needle and go and then i am going to take my needle and go under this last uh, here in the back so uh, you can see i'm just going underneath that stitch of thread there and leave a little loop on top and then bring your needle through loop to tie a knot just give it a little bit of a tug and then we are going to do that one more time make a double knot to make sure it's secure go ahead and snip that off and you have successfully made a seam with a running stitch and that holds together pretty nicely so the running stitch is nice in next lecture you will learn how to do a back stitch so remember the running stitch is a fundamental hand sewing technique that can be adapted for various sewing projects with practice you will become proficient in creating beautifully stitched seams and embellishments if you have any questions you can feel free to ask about this i'm here to help welcome to lecture 7 in this lecture you will delve into the back stitch a fundamental hand sewing technique known for its durability and strength back stitching by hand is a vital sewing technique used for reinforcing seams 
repairing tears and adding decorative elements to fabric projects. It involves stitching backward to skewer threads and create a strong durable seam. Whether for practical reinforcement or creative embellishment, back stitching plays a crucial role in achieving professional and polished seaming results. Back stitch is more secure and it's something that mimics at the what a sewing machine would do. So this is a really secure and strong method of you need a really secure seam. First take your same fabric piece here and just prepare the same as our previous one using your ruler and mark a straight line and secure the fabric with pins. And then I have got my thread with a knot tied again at the end. So this is going to start out just like the stitch. We are going to bring our needle up from the back. The knot catches it there. We are going to go about a quarter of an inch forward again. Do one stitch length forward. And then we are going to bring our needle up the same length, about a quarter of an inch away. As that first stitch and then instead of going forward like we did for the running stitch, you are going to take your needle and go back into the same hole that the previous stitch. That the previous stitch went down in and that's why we call this one the back stitch. So again one stitch length forward and then back into the spot that that the previous stitch is coming up in stitch length forward and then back to the previous stitches. This takes a little bit more time than the running stitch but gives you results that looks a lot more like what a sewing machine would produce. You can also do a little bit more of a sewing rather than stabbing method for this and for what you would just put the needle down in this spot and at the previous thread was coming up and then bring it up and then bring it up the quarter of an inch away down here and that just makes it go a little bit faster like that. And once you get to the end, turn your work over and you will see that the front looks a little bit different from the back. And But we are going to take our needle and thread again. We are going to go under this uh, last stitch and I am running out of thread here but leave a little bit of a loop. Put the needle through the loop pull to tie a knot and then do that one last stitch leave a little loop and pull that through that will give you a double knot on the back to make it secure you can trim off, trim that off and you have got a nice secure back stitch that would not be showing at all here if i were using the right color of thread uh, orange thread you wouldn't see that on the other side but I'm using the dark threads just so you can see the stitches there you have your basic back stitch by the end of this lecture you will possess these skills and confidence to execute the back stitch flawlessly allowing you to tackle a wide range of sewing projects with finies and PCN if you have any question about this, you can feel free to ask. I'm here to help you. Welcome to lecture 8. In the final lecture, we will focus on the invisible stitch, which is also known as ladder stitch or slip stitch. 
a valuable technique for closing seams seamlessly by hand. You will learn how to execute this stitch step by step, ensuring that your stitches remain nearly invisible on the finished project. This technique is particularly useful for closing openings in garments like pillows or stuffed toys or other fabric items where a visible seam would detract from the overall appearance. Mastering the invisible stitch will add a professional touch to your sewing projects and expand your repertoire of hand sewing skills. Before you begin, iron or hand press the fabric where you want the seam to be. Thread the needle and make a knot at the end. I am doubling up the thread for extra strength. Grab your fabric in your left hand and then take your needle on right hand. Bring the needle up through one of the iron edges. The knot is hidden. Then go to the opposite side and slide the needle through the top of the fold. Next. Go directly across to the other side and do the same thing. Repeat this a couple more times. The trick to this stitch is when you go from side to side, go straight across so the thread is perpendicular to the folds. The thread will start to like the rungs on a ladder. Then when you pull the thread out, the stitches will disappear. Continue this process down the opening pulling the thread out every couple of stitches. When you get to the end, pick up a bit of fabric like before. This time, bring the needle through the loop of thread so you form a knot. Then repeat this going through the knot you just made. Do this once more just to make sure it's extra secure. Finally, to hide the tail of the thread, go down through the knot out the side of the fabric and snip the thread and that's it the stitches are just about invisible in conclusion mastering the invisible stitch is a valuable skill in sewing allowing for seamless and professional looking seams by hand this technique is essential for closing openings in garments and fabric items where visible seams would be undesirable with practice you can achieve nearly invisible seams that enhance the quality and appearance of your sewing projects. If you have any questions about these basic stitches, you can feel free to ask. I am here to help you. Thank you for joining me in this section.